Hello and welcome back into the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. This is a fun, casual joint, and it's going to be a fun, casual conversation about the undefeated hey. Ohio State Buckeyes, number one in the country, at least for now. That's Justin Zwick, Bobby Carpenter, Nicole Cox. I'm Austin Ward. Maybe the college football. Are you predicting something? Committee. Your magic eight yeah, ball? What's think, going on here? I'm going to look at. Oh gosh, it's time to penalize somebody for no reason, and that's what they'll mm. do on Tuesday night, and they'll drop Ohio State behind Georgia. That's my prediction, Bob. Well, Georgia has played some pretty good teams. They did smoke Ole Miss. Yeah. And so I'll give them credit. It's amazing because Georgia, all year, when they were playing teams that weren't really a threat, they kind of played right to their level. Mm-hmm. And then like, oh, Kentucky's going to be by not cov- By not covering. By not, well, it was close games. Yeah. Auburn, they right. almost lost. That's true, yeah. You know, but then all of a sudden, Kentucky, bam, smoked them. Oh, Florida, this could be a good one. Florida's playing well. Boom, smoked them. I was like, but Ole Miss actually I think is pretty good. Give him credit, it was close for a quarter and a half, and then you could start to feel like that gas pedal going down. Like old Lane Train, I don't know if you have what it takes to stop them. And plus, Brock Bowers is back now, and he like, oh, is he going to be back? Yeah, he looked pretty good. So I think they have everything they need. By, by the way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't it, matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Because here's the ultimate. You're going to get the huge bump should you take care of business the way you're supposed to the final week of the season. And then you're going to play Iowa. And so you're not going to get any bump from playing Iowa. Are you talking about top 20 Iowa? Iowa's going to be in the teens this, this week, aren't they? <laughs> Just because everybody else Come on, baby. They keep I winning. Mean, they That's lost to defense. Minnesota, who got beat by Purdue 30, 49 to 30. I was like, oh, Minnesota might come in. It was like a little worry. Early in the season, dark horse. They beat Iowa. Could they win Typically, the West? Yeah. You know, they play a lot of Jim Trestle style mm-hmm. ball. It may not be pretty, but they win. And then they gave up 49 points to a 3-7 and seven Purdue team. What are we doing? Yeah, not, mm. not the way you want to be rolling into the horseshoe on Saturday. Ohio State uh, hosts Minnesota at 4 o'clock. It is senior day somehow. Ooh. All of a sudden. Not somehow. It's, it's, the, it's the final it's home game. That's how it is. They're eating turkey next uh, Thursday. Uh, that is this crazy. year has <laughs> gone quite fast. I'm sorry for the wild tangent to start the show. Now let's get it back to the Buckeyes. That was Jay-Z, probably the most impressive half we've seen from this team all year, or at least the most impressive first half. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, golly, we've been talking about wanting them, wanting them to come out and start fast. Uh, I think Rutgers, we kind of did. I mean, 11-11, I mean, at least quarterbacking-wise. I mean, they didn't, start, they didn't finish the drive. No, though. you didn't finish the drive. Yeah, yeah. fair, but I mean, it, you, had, you looked like you were going to have some kind of offense that day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, man, yes, come out the gate, scoring touchdowns, uh, that's what – I feel like that's what we needed to happen so we could get some of those guys some rest and, and feel good about it. And feel good about it when we had our possessions in that first half. We took care of business, came out in the third, did the same. I mean, it, it was uh, – I don't know if they were just that bad or if, man, we were starting to figure something out and things are starting to click a little bit right now for us, you know? I mean, I wanna, yeah. I'm hoping it's the latter because that would be good going into these next couple. But, uh, you know, it's a good get-right game, I guess. No matter how you look at it, we did what we were supposed to do, took care of business, uh, for the most part, everybody's healthy, I think, coming out of that. Yeah. Um, then, you know, everybody, everybody's a little banged up right yeah. now. But, yeah, I, mean, I don't think we lost really anything, uh, you know, going into these last two games. So, a, a win all around. No one got injured in the game, at least from the visualization, well, like serious yeah. Yeah. stuff. Yeah. Hurt call, slash injured, you know. My I mean, call left for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, Xavier Johnson's still working through some things. He missed some reps, but he went back Yeah, in. I mean, but those, yeah, in and out. I mean, that's kind of where we yeah, are still this year. Playing, yeah. Kate Stover, who has played but really hasn't been utilized, you know, due to a, you know, he's wearing a nice knee brace now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he looked wrist, wrist, good, right but he looked good in the game. Oh, yeah, you saw him, like, and we saw what that offense has when they have that vertical threat of him mm-hmm. down the middle of the field, open stuff up for Marvin, can run the ball a little better. And then you didn't play with Tommy, Josh, or Lathan all as well on defense. And defense performed pretty well. Like Malik Hartford looked good. Mm-hmm. Sonny, like all those guys went in. Cody and Steele handled it in the middle. So I thought, okay, you've got guys rest. You didn't really have any new injuries. And so hopefully this week looks a, a lot of, of the same. same. Yes. Like, hey, go get them. Get the dogs fed. Get them on the porch. Let everyone else go out there. What they have? Did they have seven possessions in the first half? Six? They scored on five of them. They scored the first three. They had a punt. And then I think yeah. they scored two more. I couldn't think if they had seven. And obviously, they had a, I was trying to write snap judgments at halftime. So they, at least had, <laughs> they at least that had nice. six. Yeah. But that's the first time, like you I said, those early. Yeah. we've seen them come out, chunk play, drive, 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 mm-hmm. get stops, get the ball back. And uh, it wasn't necessarily quite shades of uh, 2021 where it was 49 nothing at halftime. Mm-hmm. But they played well. And like everybody was happy. And then you get to see – we saw Lincoln Keenholz oh, out yeah. there. 
Come on, the legend of Zelda running around looking good. <laughs> yeah, I got that bold prediction right, uh, as the rest of that quarterback room still pretty banged up. Nicole, how did you feel about it? I absolutely loved watching that first half. We, I feel like we, we came to the game and we're ready to go. It definitely was. Kyle, I think that was the best game of his career. Mm-hmm. He was decisive. His footwork was incredible just with his balance and just finding the, you know, the open hole for the guys to run it and make all those touchdowns in the first half, which was very exciting. So I, I just think we look the best we've looked yet, honestly, because it usually it takes until that second half for us to look really great. Mm-hmm. I also think us taking some of the guys out during the second half was a smart move. I, I always worry about that somebody getting hurt over something dumb, you know, like when guys Doesn't get matter. hurt at practice, you know, it's like, Something dumb it's like practice isn't, no, isn't no, no, necessarily no. It's dumb, not but dumb, yes. but it's it's. I understand. You but know, you don't like need, they don't need to be something out there. you don't need they to don't be doing. Need, yes, exactly. So eliminate the situations. Practice is obviously necessary, but you you feel so bad when you hear it's at practice right. and not even during mm-hmm. a game. Um, so I just thought that was a very smart decision on the coaching staff's behalf. Yeah, they seem to be managing some of that stuff a lot differently in order to get to twelve days from now, which yes. is we all know what how they're ultimately going to be judged. Well, I think, too, Ryan, you know, if you look at him, he is, I would say, a merciful head coach. But as long like, hey, Michigan State went out there and, you know, talking to some of the guys, like, oh, I'm surprised they didn't try this or that. Mm-hmm. Like, What's the point? They kind Why? of knew where they were. Like, let's go out here. Let's we put what we want to put on film, right? Because we got a yeah. big game coming up. We don't want to do too much here. Yeah, like, hey, as long as Michigan State, they're not pushing, doing too much. Yeah. We respect you guys. Mm-hmm. It's 35-3. It doesn't need to be yeah. 60 you know, 64 to 65 to three, we can let you guys rest, get our young guys in, get some work yep. and not be excessive, push the ball down the field, even with the young guys. Cause you, I mean, you could call some stuff with the younger guys and still You're probably still run it up. I th- and I think that that takes investment from the veteran guys who are sitting too. Like, yeah. I think there's been a conversation in the past, like, well, you work so hard Sunday through Friday that you want the payday, like let them go play on a Saturday against anybody. They've earned the opportunities and go get stats. Like, Kate Stover does not need stats. Tommy Eichenberg does not need stats. They want to ring. They, they want, want to win. They want they win. But, yeah, I mean, so that's everybody outside of the program talking, right? We need to, These guys need to do well, this. No, no, or, yeah, I think even within the program. Yeah. Like, cause, mm-hmm. I mean, imagine you get late in your senior year and, like, you're not going to play today. What? There's only two more opportunities. You're going to take yeah. one away? Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's what I'm, I'm not, I guess not I'm, I'm thinking more of a quarterback, like, all right, I want to be on the second half. <laughs> you know, I want to no, no, go out yeah, and play sure. so yeah. well in that first where it's like, all right, yeah, we did our job. We won. Now let these young guys and we go and enjoy and you know, untie your shoes and have a hot dog and, you know, in the second half and just <laughs> relax, kind of, a little bit. relax that's, a little bit. That's part of hey, you know, you look that's at what, part of being the team and be a team guy. And what Kyle did in the first half, it justified that. Yeah, could you go out there and throw for another 150 yards and oh, two more touchdowns? Yeah, you Probably. could, but I mean, yep. the risk of someone rolling up on your ankle again, which has been giving you problems. Mm-hmm. You know, who knows what all the the things that could potentially happen that are negative that. Get the young guys some work so you don't have a guy coming in who's never th- like thrown a pass in a college football game who may have to start for you. Sure. Like, I mean, some- what happened your senior year, right? Yeah. Michigan game. You get hurt, James Lornitis has to come in yeah. and play. You, know, you, know, you don't know when those young guys are going to have to step up. Or happens what they're all the gonna, time. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Nicole, you had a full weekend of Ohio State quarterbacks. Yes, I did. You know. I did. I was, uh, oh, how was right. the trip down to Cincinnati? It was incredible. And CJ, what a game. it was, and it was really interesting too. I felt like there were a lot more Texans fans than at the last Bengals Texans game we went to, which was I can't even remember what year that was. It was a long time ago. Um, I'm like, where did all these Texans fans come from? I was like, we've been, here, we've been here, we've been here since day one, but I loved it. You know, so <laughs> kind of like Austin with Taylor. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes yes. you like things that you like from day one. <laughs> I agree with you. And on sometimes that. the bandwagon gets bigger, and there's nothing you can do. And about I'm okay it. with it because yeah. it was really fun to see. Um, and it was really we sat next to the greatest fan he was awesome he loved the Bengals, but he was still so like nice to us which was really which was really neat i don't know it's just i think i just have so much respect for the fans and i watching the Bengals stadium too how they really encourage them to be loud and i mean really loud <laughs> so i i just think that really does add to the atmosphere oh, you yeah. know so we looked to look bobby you've talked about that before you know and um cj played i mean in the 
the guy sitting next to me, he was like, your quarterback makes me so nervous. I was like, I know, I know. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, buddy. And sorry about you it. You heard the mixed feelings of all these Bengals fans. And then they're like, but CJ was, uh, we love him. We love him. You know, so it was a really great game. Well, it's crazy because both guys played really well and then made some critical errors at the end <laughs> to kind of. Give it away yeah. each each way. Just oh. to spice it up a little bit. Yeah. This fan is screaming at people that were leaving the Bengals fans. And he's like, you don't leave your team. You're going to be sorry when we win and you're going to hear it on the radio. And in my mind, I'm thinking, he really thinks they're going to win. He's crazy. And then they <laughs> threw that interception. Yeah. I was like, oh, man. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. that. Uh, I got really some, nervous for a second. Some fine work by Tyler Boyd in the end zone. Maybe that looks a little mm, bit different. Yeah. Um, and then it all relied on the brand new kicker we had. And luckily, he saved the day. But I didn't even know Noah Brown was in Houston. Honestly, yeah, yeah they, this year right? well, he made a big play. He made a couple of big plays last week, and they're st- he stayed around the, with the uh, he was with the Cowboys, Cowboys for like six yeah. years. It's, it's crazy. Only his second stop, isn't it? Yeah, and he yeah. was there maybe five years, but he was like their. He had like what? That was the Oklahoma fifth. game, right? Back yeah. in the day. Yeah. I mean, he was like their nuts? fourth, fifth receiver. You know, and just yeah. grinding away, play yeah. special teams. Guys get hurt, come in, have. Four catches for 70 yeah. yards, maybe a touchdown here he or there. He did what he had to do to stick around, yeah. and then all of a sudden, man. <laughs> Everybody loves him. Like, yeah. he's a, he can play special teams. He's reliable. He, he, we don't want him to be, like, our one or two guy, but if he's our third guy yeah, for, half, for a handful of games, like, mm-hmm. we're good, good with that. Looks like it's working out fine for Houston. So, we know that Nicole is giving a couple Buckeye leaves to Noah Brown and C.J. Stroud. But what about <laughs> the actual game on Saturday night? Um, I'm going to go with Marvin Harrison, Jr. I obviously – he is he's incredible he's a very special and talented player would you um, say he's the most outstanding player in college football dun, dun, you know dun. what yes i would just because all i watch is <laughs> are the buckeyes he's, he's for the college yeah. it really and you know i've had this conversation just about i also i felt chris Olave was very talented and garrett wilson so i so put them a lot all, of other people i put them i put them all in the same category. So let's put it that way. Okay. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best player this for right now in college. So I think he's probably surpassed Chris and Garrett. You honestly. think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he hasn't yet on the record sheet with, what was it that Chris has number, number yeah, one? He's uh, touchdowns? Yep. Yeah, I, touchdowns. 25, he's six, he's six, mm-hmm. six behind him, I think. Yeah. So he'll reach it. And Michael well, Jenkins. Chris had the benefit the of an extra year. <clears throat> Marvin, Very true. Marvin's played two full seasons and then got the jump then start in the Rose surpassed. Bowl. Yep. Yeah. I mean, surpassed on a per game basis, what we're watching with Marvin Harrison has really never been done at Ohio State. No, he's the first guy that back to back thousand yard season. I mean, he's been which is incredible. Oh yeah, you and, think of all the great receivers. David Boston was in for this weekend, mm-hmm. and you know he just broke his touchdown record. Mm-hmm. You know, so now he's second. I mean, he he makes a, a bunch of miraculous catches still. Yeah. He's got some inexplicable drops this year, which is like kind of wild. Even one on Saturday, like, a decent handful saying, like, of them. I mean, like just like easy. The, it's yeah. it's literally the easiest, you expect him to make the easiest ones that you would think that he would catch. So there's there's something going on with one of his wrists that he's had mm. uh, a brace on it for over a month. I've I'm not trying to draw any attention to it for opponents. That's what or it sounds else. like you're doing, but I mean, I, I do think it's worth mentioning what he's doing, and maybe it's a cause for some of these drops. Maybe it's not. I'm just. Laying out a fact, and we can talk about it or not talk about it. That I think is adding to some of the insane catches, Nicole, that he's pulling off. Wait, like, I, exactly. Ankle injury and a wrist injury that have slowed him down a little bit. Well, not really. I mean, the numbers. <laughs> exactly. Are really Especially, and it just makes him that much more incredible. I mean, to have a wrist injury and to to have to use it <laughs> constantly. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I just don't have a high tolerance for pain, so I'm like. <laughs> You know, I just, I do. I look at these guys that are banged up and they still perform just as well. And I, it's. Well, and that wrist doesn't stop taking a The standard is the standard, the ball. Nope. I think that's what you, you were, was that nope. the point you were going for? Nope. Yeah. Nope. I, I think you set the standard because that's what he does. Yeah. Like he really does. He's like, if I can go out here and do this, then everybody else should be able to rise up. And then somebody else should be like, well, you can do that. Look what I can do. You know, you mm, just keep. I like this. You yes. have to exceed iron the standard. Iron Always. So, so the next wide receiver in line has to be a Heisman Trophy candidate. That's I the mean, standard now. Yeah, that's the standard. I think so. Do you think he was? The call is, has is there a way? inadvertently looped all the way back around to the standard being the standard. Is there a way? I'm starting to wonder about that myself, but I just think the way Bobby has used it sometimes has – it just hasn't been used correctly. Let's okay. put it that way. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yep. I, I do. I do feel that. I mean, like, the standard is the standard. Like, 
we win there. No, ex- you know, exceptions. I just feel like it's football. There are sometimes exceptions to that. You know, if people are cheating on the other team, Ooh, there you mm. go. Well, that that's was, their uh, standard. Sure that's, that never that. that's their standard, especially sure? not in the Big Ten. Uh, Austin, do you think there is a way that Marvin doesn't win the Blinikoff? We haven't mm, had a Blinikoff winner since, since Terry Glenn. He should have. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, he should have won last receiver? year, right? That's the him. best wide receiver. So now they're they're popping up this kid from, what, Florida State saying. Keon Coleman. He's the Michigan State they've, transfer. They've talked about Rome Adunze at Washington, and, and he's like they're – Marvin's numbers, if you look at like the top ten, there are other guys that are pretty comparable. Mm-hmm. Uh, like He's not go, blowing them away far and away like Devonta Smith did to yeah. win the Heisman. Like you can – People will make cases probably like, well, I don't know, Marvin didn't do this or that, and like, or they also have a Mecca Buka. Like, I, that can be a factor. Mm-hmm. I think anyone with eyes, any voters that actually watch Ohio State, recognize that he's the best. Can you be in invited country. to New York as the only wide receiver there yet not win the Blitnikoff? I think that's we'll find out this year. <laughs> I think he could win the Heisman and not, and not win, and win and the Blitnikoff. No, that, that would be. That I think it is something. an honor to win these awards. I think it's absolutely. And the people that win them, they deserve them. And But everybody there deserves to win that award. I feel the voting, once it gets to that point, sometimes I feel like well, it shouldn't have, define yeah. who you are mm-hmm. as a player because they, they're they all great, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, get kind of weird about that. They are. There's a lot of people that vote that don't watch Yes. All of it, and they that's look at the stats well, at the end of the year. That's my say, problem. Well, it, that's it gets it gets best. regional as well, and like I, I what what I said on Saturday night because Marvin should have already clinched a, a spot in New York. He should be a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. What do you mean, JJ McCarthy throwing the ball eight times in a victory doesn't? Well, I never cons- him. I never considered JJ as a legitimate candidate. He was the odds on favorite. Well, he's not anymore. He was at one point. He was like at one a week point. ago, two weeks ago, and then people woke up and realized, well, maybe. He's completing 92% of his play-action passes because he knows hmm. what defense they're in. Right? Uh-huh. Hmm. Uh, maybe we should take that into account. And also, Kyle McCord has better numbers than this guy. So, hmm, one of those is like criticized every single week as not being good enough. But they're the other undefeated. Trophy camp. Okay, Bob, let's, let's go. I just think that the stat sheets are, I don't know, like in the, in the restaurant industry, the beer numbers, sometimes they come to us with that. I'm like, this just does not... I, the Austin, numbers stop look drinking. Great, but we it don't just, know what's going on here. No, it just, the way the We're numbers are compared, down all tangent. Yeah. it's not comparing apples to oranges. Well, or apples to apples, you know? Stats, one of my friends told me statistics are like hostages. They'll tell you anything you want. Like, however you choose to manipulate them, like, oh, look at this and this. Like, well, we're cutting it this way. And Mm -hmm. however we try to isolate Mm -hmm. it to make our situation look the best. That's why when it comes to this, I just try to watch a lot of the games. The dude out in Washington's pretty good. He is good. I'm not, I mean, sa- and I'm not saying he's not. Yeah. Oh no, I'm with you. It's just and the regional part is there's there's a you know it's like the electoral college. So there's people out there that him. cover the Pac-12 that are going to vote for him. If Jalen Milrow beats Georgia, everybody in the South is going to vote for him to win yeah. the Heisman, mm-hmm. even though he got benched in September. And I'm not saying that should disqualify anybody as a candidate, but Marvin has sustained it throughout the year and really over two years, and sometimes. And he's a great kid. I think that needs yeah. to be taken well, into most, consideration too. Honestly, they, they are supposed that that is supposed to be the, part of it. Okay, the good. most outstanding player, and they talk about like the description of it. And it talks about like integrity and class, and I, I try to take that in. That's with my Johnny great, Manziel one. Yeah, and that <laughs> like, and that's where some of these arguments <laughs> happen. Should they be disqualified from voting for him due to an off the field issue? So, yeah, there are actually already voters. Uh, they're not supposed to talk about their ballots, but Greg Doyle is one oh, of yeah. the Indianapolis Star, and he's like, "Hey, people, you cannot vote for JJ McCarthy. He's a beneficiary. Of, I'm not calling him a cheater. He's a beneficiary of cheating. And the numbers you can't take, you don't know if they're real. And I think that's the biggest <clears throat> indictment of the last two years, really, in the series. But we'll get to that next week. Let's get back to Michigan State and Jay Z's Buckeye Leaf. Uh, my Buckeye Leaf. Um, I mean, Kyle's the easy one, right? Yeah. Best Give it to your guy. Just yeah, well, no, I'm not going to, but I just I want to I want to throw that. At you. He he definitely should get one. He should. I was gonna go with with Kate Stover, uh, seven for seven. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. targets, eighty yards, an awesome touchdown play. I mean, I think having him back in that lineup that Bob talked about, you know, having him get vertical and just giving that defense something else to have to worry about. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been huge. I think he's been great all year long. Uh, it's good to have him healthy. I hope, I hope he continues to to heal up because I think he could be big against Michigan here in a couple of weeks. But uh, yeah. you know, just having that I and mean, quarterbacks love having a big dude across the middle mm-hmm. that they can trust. Big dudes, big dudes everywhere. Yep, only across the middle. Right? 
<laughs> that they can trust to throw up there and he's going to make a play for him or at worst case scenario, he's going to knock it down, play defense, do what he has to do. So I think Cade, Cade is a guy, he's a, kind of a security blanket for Kyle there in the middle. So I'm giving mine to him. I love it. I'm going to give uh, two out. I'm going to give one to Cody Simon who led the team in tackles again. And, you know, not the regular starter, but is, they've started rotating him a lot mm-hmm. with Tommy and Cade and, mm-hmm. or Tommy and yeah. Steele. And it's been worked out really well because – then Tommy got hurt, and it's like, okay, yeah. you've got a guy who's played a lot, <laughs> who deserves to play, who now has experience and understanding of what, yeah. how this defense work and works and what goes on. So that's awesome. I love seeing him at that type of success, waiting, just working, not complaining, not yeah. getting to the transfer portal, can, right? not throwing <laughs> his gloves in the stands and going <laughs> walking off the field in the middle of the game oh and flipping gosh. off everybody. Yeah, remember that one? Yeah, yeah that happened. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, and then another guy who's a freshman who was the talk of camp and then you get to the season and the older guys play and you know what guys get hurt and he's got to get out there and Malik Hartford has yeah. played really well the mm-hmm. last couple of weeks when called upon and he's a true freshman and that's awesome to see Cincinnati kid I, or where's he from yeah he's from Cincinnati Cincinnati yeah. kid you know doing playing really well and you look at two of our young freshmen from both, Cincinnati both of them Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah playing well when called upon and that's that's what you like to see in a program like this where you get your young guys ready to go you get them reps, and then when they ultimately have to play, yeah. hey, they're good. And so when some of these guys leave next year, when Josh Proctor you know, leaves after his seventh year of college, you have a guy who's like, hey, started a couple games, played well. You're not just panicking. Like, Ooh, I don't know yeah, what he's going to look yeah. like. Yeah. And so those guys have like earned that trust and big trust, woo-woo, and feeling good about that. Also, I mean, important in the short term because – it doesn't look yeah. like at this point that Lathan Ransom is going to be back in time for this week or the game, like, or maybe at all. So, uh, you need yep. you need some supplement there with the depth along with Sonny, and you get Josh Proctor back and Jordan Hancock at nickel. So we'll see how that transpires. But you can, I think, with Malik, it's it's encouraging and refreshing to see the progress. Like, got pulled from that start early on, yeah. week two, mm-hmm. week three. He talked. It was funny last week. He uh, came out for Wednesday night interviews, and people were like, well, "What what happened there?" Like. What do you think caused, you know, to you to have that step back in September and you couldn't play? And he's like, uh, "I'm a freshman." I'm like, "What? Well, yeah, that's that's, that's a pretty answer. good reason." <laughs> you don't know it. You don't yeah. know it yet. That's not it, Malik. <laughs> I was, oh, listen to Knowles. It's so great in practice. So, but you, that's the proper learning yeah. curve. Yeah. Like you, you let him have that opportunity. Then he couldn't. He wasn't quite ready for it. Go back, learn from it, take the next step forward, and correct and go. I, I like the way that they handled it with Malik Harford, and I think that's. Put them in position in November, so I think you can give, uh, you know, credit there to Perry Eliano and Jim Knowles and the way that they've managed that. And this defense is really good, so I'll give some Buckeye leaves to the staff there and Matthew Jones, who never really gets talked about. Who? Matthew. <laughs> Matt, who? Matt Jones. Matt Jones. Matt Jones. <laughs> uh, the right guard and also a cameo at center. Why? What? Is that important? I don't know. Ten snaps there. Um, Bill Landis was banging this drum all off. Does anyone else snap the ball this year? Just Matt Jones. Like, I don't it, – even late in games, I think they left Carson Hensman. That's what there. I'm saying. Like, the, the last – Just last, in case, JIC, <laughs> in case Hensman, like, busts his chin strap, like, has to go out for a play. one play. His helmet comes off. But the just in – I mean, the just in case might be something else. I mean, that's been – the last four games, mm-hmm. the grades Spiracy there in the middle theory. have not been good. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't normally think – the penultimate week of the regular season is when you make a big change. But Mm-mm. if there is something that Michigan State does pretty well, that defensive line and the tackles can create problems. I think you want to explore every option. And the fact that Matthew Jones can slide in there when six years after he was the number one center Man, in the country, geez, finally get a look at him to go do nuts. it in a game and get 10 snaps. I, it's a long circle. I, Time is a flat circle. It is. You know what else can be circular? Ooh. What we got? Well, we got Mac and what do we got today? I is it Mott Sticks? sticks. Or, 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 or. Mott Sticks? I just looked. I think it's Mott Sticks. Mm, it's, it's an appetizer Tuesday. It is. Favorites. It's Mozzarella it's Day. It's Mott Day. Mm, yep. Look at those. Get in Mott there. Sticks. They're really, they're the five-tool player of the appetizer sheet. Uh, they're gooey. They're delicious. They're golden brown. And they're $3 all day long at Roosters. And bam. Uh-oh. What? What's hold this? on. Two games. Two Dude. opportunities Shit. left. Wow, running Scan out of time. Scan the QR code. I can't believe Roosters it's already that far. We're here. I know. We're here. 
Ten winners already. You better hope. I picked the tenth Nicole, today. You, did you start making flights? You get the plans? No. Get it booked? Well, you know Travel Partners of Dublin yeah, does that. That's they good. do a great job. Um, but yeah, just getting the winners ready. I've got my sheet ready of all the questions they have to answer and um I just can't believe it. Like what kind of like questions is they have to like uh like one or two fandom, bags, like, prove, prove your fandom bad. before no. you actually yes. do come on this. Have you, you ever really filmed Ohio Austin? State sidelines? Yeah. Smoking or not smoking <laughs> room? What do you feel about Marvin? I guess Harrison? maybe we should ask some questions like that, but um, no. It's just Let like, me read your Twitter. Were you were you yeah. one in Comic Court benched yes. earlier this year? Off you can't yeah, disqualify. <laughs> Knock on wood. We have been so lucky. We've had the greatest people. Because you're right. You could have. It could be scary situation, but no. <laughs> could have a Karen, been couple been Karens good. in there. Yeah. Nicole Everybody's had never thought about that possibility. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I honestly, I just don't think of things like that. And There's I just bad think people it's out there, be okay. Nicole. Because right. Nicole mm-hmm. gets those good seats, and they've got a vantage point. You can just pull off the Could you 12 games, 12 That's winners. That's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Nicole, I'm trying to tell watch. the folks how to win what, here. What, comes, what comes with it? 12 tickets, 12 games, 12 <laughs> winners, pair of tickets, airfare, deluxe hotel <laughs> accommodations, deluxe. Rooster's swag. Mm. Like I said, roosterswings.com, QR code, scan it, register. Yeah, you can register once a day, by the way. Be part of the 30 yes. million people that registered last, last week. Was insane. Million, so it was 32 million. 32 million, I think, million last week. People. So it's hard to win, but it's worth it. I promise you. Just everybody <laughs> register. It, it is. There well, are you can't, like, you can't there win are if you don't tens play of thousands. I know. But sure. it is. it is. It's very exciting. Who's going to win on Saturday at 4 o'clock? Um, well, definitely us. Mm-hmm. And my score prediction is 42-7. 40. That's, that sounds like pretty that. good. Seven. I honestly like that. Mm-hmm. All right. Nicole's got it on the record. What else? What else is cooking? Not much, guys. Just getting very, very excited for the game coming up after this weekend. I know one game at a one time. Game at a time. One By game the at way, time. Roosters is closed on Thanksgiving, so they can Ooh. be with their families. Thank you. I've Bobby. been lobbying to keep them open because <laughs> where else? I mean, where else would you want to be than watching need, football Roosters? Maybe your turkey. You need some chicken. Maybe we'll just open you up. You can get early it to go Black order Friday. before. Yeah. Six a.m. on Black Friday. No, no, because I have to do my shopping before oh, okay. work. Yeah. What? Why is everybody starting Black Friday deals at the start of November? What's happening? I love it. I know you already had it your just decorations keeps getting actually. earlier. And earlier. Oh, guys, the decorations are can't we are they well. done? Enjoy Not Turkey done. Day. No, nope, there's too many. Uh, mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Be Next thing you know, you're, you're going to see tree. a turkey dressed up as Santa Claus. That's what you're going to see. You know who grew up on a Christmas tree farm? Who? Taylor Swift. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. It's not cool enough. I like it. No, I like it a lot. Oh, she's all on. She's on board. Did she really? Yeah. I'll get you. I'll get you. Ellen's song. That's like the hey, closest. Ellen's dad has a Christmas tree. Farm. That's like, really? Yeah. Okay. How about that? I want to come get one. <laughs> real? Well, it's, <laughs> it's a small little square, but he's yeah. got a bunch of trees back there. I that's love cool. it. That's where we get ours every year. It's oh, good. I love oh, that. See? I want a real tree this year. That's as close oh. as you can get to being buddy. Wait, you don't have a, you're not allowed to have a real tree. <laughs> I broke our vacuum when we first got together. Oh, did you sweep up the pine needles? Oh, come Never on, Nicole. Since then, we haven't had a real tree. <laughs> come on. I, you know what? I respect Mark for putting his foot down. <laughs> you want a real tree, number one, let's water it a little bit. You know, <laughs> Number two, you can't sweep up the pine needles. Ruined a vacuum on this. But like, major ruin. That makes, yeah, <laughs> major ruin, meaning uh, you had a very expensive Christmas yes, tree. Yes. <laughs> all right, so we're... we're yeah, at least there's a new vacuum under that tree. <laughs> hey, all right. Skipping ahead to Christmas and the game, both after Thanksgiving. Maybe as we, we come back for the second half of the show, we'll talk a little bit more about Ohio State beating Michigan State. I don't know. Can't guarantee it, but we're going to let Nicole <laughs> go about the rest of her day in here at Roosters. It is a fun, casual joint. Roosters has been so fortunate. We just want to be able to give some of that back to the community. They donate to organizations that are near and dear to their heart, and we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long time. They will always go above and beyond to help support our foundation to further help veterans. It's just a wonderful feeling to know that Roosters supports the Buckeye Cruise for Cancer. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Welcome back in to the Horseshoe Lounge for the live show. Berm is here. Hey. 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 This guy. Hello. Who got your Buckeye leaf? Well, I was going to give it to Kate Stover mm-hmm. uh, because... Don't let Jay-Z scare I know, but you. Like, no, he doesn't listen. He always I, says I he doesn't no, listen to us. At that time, I was listening. Oh. And I didn't... I expected you of all people would not take Kate Stover. I, well... But here you are. Uh, I guess the tight I mean, end Kyle is, is just the tight end is the quarterback's easy. best friend. Always is. So yeah. um, uh, Kyle McCord gets one for sure. Uh, that the step up that he took this week is pretty darn important for Ohio State to see him take that uh, you know elevation to his game. Obviously, 
you don't want to put too much stock into it. It's Michigan State, but it, it was just the process looked a whole lot cleaner for Kyle on Saturday. Uh, so that's that's a big, big step forward for Ohio State, for Common Court. Uh, uh, Co- did you say Cody Simon? No. Yeah. Okay, that was my other one. So, Emily Hartford. I guess I'm screwed. Uh, Malik Hartford, I mean, if you're talking about someone who might be the most important player no one's going to talk about for the next couple of yeah. weeks for Ohio State, it may be Malik Hartford because, obviously, we expect Lathan Ransom at this point to not be available probably for the Michigan game. Don't you underestimate I'm not gonna Adam let, Stewart let them over his magic. Let, let them over-impress, okay? Uh, let, that's fine. I've I'll watched be. I watched him go get... Tons of cord blood, placentas. They're doing soaks in that, mm-hmm. penetrating I don't it down. Think in. that people should hear that. That's it's a disgusting. joke, by the way. But Tom Cruise eats it, so that's what keeps him young. Mix it up with the eggs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where uh, does he get such a huge supply of placentas? Where I wonder. No, he but, goes to the hospital. No, I had him. I had him put it. I, I, think we're, I think we're going. Well, down I tried to have the lady down. put it in There's a, a, in a out shopping out bag, a plastic shopping bag. Our nurse, she didn't think. Be careful what you say that's about funny. The Scientologist. Well, that's yeah. I don't yeah you get, go on, you get on record saying something like that. You you'll become a uh, SP. You're on the hit you list. might be. You know, what, you know what SP? Austin probably does. He's out there on the West Coast. Might be a suppressive person. Yeah, you might be become an MP, a missing person. That's the progression. You started that. Anyway, yeah, I mean, uh, Millie Hartford, if you're looking for a guy that Ohio State raved about him in the offseason and then he was a freshman and did what freshmen do, and I was talking about it with Bill on, on this morning's podcast daily, like you, you'd like to see a kid like that being aggressive. Sometimes he's a little over-aggressive, gets himself out of position, but we're in year six of the Josh Proctor experiment, and he still does the same thing now. So uh, he, he, what you get out of this defense, and I think why Saturday was so important, uh, is because you finally got a chance to let some guys play that just need to get some reps. And and Malik, he had a couple plays early in the game where he was out of spot, not where he needed to be. They let him play through that. They didn't yank him. They didn't throw. Yank him for who? Yeah, they couldn't. No, they put Kai. You could put Jihad Carter out there. You could have yeah. put Kai Stokes out there. Like you could have said, hey, you know what? We're not going to go through this again. And they didn't. Uh, and they and they allowed themselves to let him play through it. And I thought he played much better towards the back half of of his day. Uh, I want to give a Buckeye leaf to Ryan Day and Justin Fry for their willingness to change the run game throughout this season. Oh, it's evolved a lot. Um, and I think that that's something that's been overlooked the last few weeks. They're, they had to completely overhaul the way that they are running the ball. And the philosophy behind how they've been blocking everything has changed in the last couple of weeks. And I think one of the things about Ryan Day is sometimes he's a little stubborn. And I, I don't know that... Uh, like you could have expected him to just throw out some of the stuff that has been the staple of his offense for a few years, and he, he has. So mm-hmm. I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably enough Michigan State talk. Right? Yeah. Let's talk Minnesota. Oh, they got a new head coach up there. I want to know. Do they? <laughs> yeah. Who's that? Guy from Kansas, I read. What? Oh, the Michigan State? Yeah, I, saw it on, I, saw, I saw it on Reddit. He... I saw Reddit college football tweet. I don't. That he, so much that he, he told, announced that he had told his team. Told I don't team, know yeah. that that's true. I saw I, that. I must have seen that same thing. But uh, it could be. We'll see. I mean, I was he denied him. interviewing there three days ago. So. Before the regular season is over, he said. That's. I mean, it seemed interesting. But they. I mean, they had the interim. The OC was going to be the interim head coach. Is the yeah. I mean, I again, I, it, the internet. Yeah, you just don't know. Fair enough. What's being made up and what's not. Anyhow, but certainly he's a guy. Still that, I know he's in the selection set that they were looking at. He's certainly going to be one of those final candidates. A lot of people, even though he denied interviewing three days ago. Don't they all? I don't yeah. know why you would. Like everyone knows it's true. Do they? Don't Sometimes they? it's not true. <laughs> well, just most like us now, we don't know what's true. Most of the time it's Wait true. Wait a minute. Hold on. Guessing. Hold on. Hold on, Burm. You yeah. are suggesting most of the so time. So you're going to take true. the word of the same people that a month ago said Urban Meyer is in East Lansing and is about to take the job? <laughs> no. They didn't. So it's not always that was true. One is that, that the same was, people? That was literally the same people have. a month ago. Well, I wouldn't no, have believed is, it. This is Reddit College Football saying it. And Reddit College Football, despite the fact that it's a social media, you know, mess, generally has pretty tuned in sources because they are aggregating people from all over the country. Okay, if you if I take that's not piles of if, if I take people. Yeah, Come on, well, if you aggregate it, cheese, but if I take uh, don't you dare don't waste if I take piles cheese, of crap though. from yeah. across the country and that's, aggregate it together, it's still a giant it's just a giant pile of crap. Yeah, but sometimes you can then you so can smell it, it then look, you can I, smell it from everywhere. I made that point to him he said he was going to throw a mac and cheese but I mean he's too scared to well, because Bob threw a piece of paper at my eye before we started. It's all right. So that's, you should have been throwing the perfect self defense. Just so you know, America, if anyone's ever coming at you with a, a weapon, throw something at them. They have to react. You cannot not react if someone throws something at your face. Hmm. Dodge, dodge, tip, dodge, dodge. dodge. Yeah, I mean, that's still five a reaction. Rolls of dodgeball. Still that's a reaction. True. Still gives you a, a very important second. What if it's a Terminator? Those aren't real. 
Not yet. Yeah, I mean, there was, yeah. a movie so, made, there was a movie made about one. Anyway, what are we talking about? Minnesota? Never yeah. saw no, that I was Minnesota I was curious if what happened Saturday at noon and what happened on Saturday at 7.30 changed your mind at all about what's going to happen in 12 days. And maybe it didn't. Hmm. I don't know if it did. I thought that game looked about how I thought it would look. Um, I think Penn State probably has some chances to pay, possibly get a little closer and win. I mean, if you want to talk, to Mike, if you want to talk about yeah. exactly, if you want to talk about a guy though that needs to lay down on the couch and get some things off his chest and really talk it through, I mean, James Franklin, I, I feel for him. He's heard so much noise He's about got it. the best agent for in him. America. We're going for it. We're going. We're, snake oil salesman. We're going, Why would you feel any because, sympathy dude, for him? He's going for two at the end uh, of the first half. Why? And you're like, what are we doing? What are you doing here? Why? You're chasing I'm pretty points sure the line. Going into I think time. the first half line was twenty three and a half or something like that. <laughs> I mean, there's and it would have made it twenty four to eleven. <laughs> I mean, there's like 14, 14, 11, and uh, I, I I think the line was twenty four and a half in the first half. Oh my god! I don't know that for sure, Bill. Bill, do you know what the first half line for Penn State Michigan? I was? hope you don't. No, no, but it's, it's <laughs> I, seemed like I wish you did. It seemed like <laughs> hey, someone awesome. told me oh, that yeah, it was a the reason I lo- stuff. the reason I lose to Ohio State and Michigan is because I'm not aggressive enough. So let's go for two right here, like this. Well, this then you don't be... go for it anymore until th- I know. you shouldn't. Have I feel went like for the it. sympathy like, needs to be for the Penn State fan base that clearly knows that James Franklin is never going to take them to the finish line. They. No sympathy for the guy who's made but he gets them really seventy close. million dollars. He, he has sixty four million dollars left on his contract. He's nineteen zero against other teams. Well, Jimbo that Fisher just Ohio got State bought out for seventy six million well, on Sunday. I don't think so. there's a bunch of oil reserves sitting over there in Happy Valley. I could <laughs> well, be mistaken. East Western but. Pennsylvania, there's some. Yeah, they got to just direct that way. <laughs> this is a guy. Think about James Franklin. I mean, aside from Ohio State, Michigan, remove them. He's basically at a thousand percent winning. Oh, he's percentage. really good. Yeah. If you oh, take well. those teams out in the last five or years, or any other top ten team, which you can't beat them either. Any other top. Whatever. He stinks. I thought he was going to be fired Sunday morning. No, they, they just He's gave him a new to, deal. They can't because two years ago, true, he yeah, capitalized yeah. on them having no president and no athletic director. Like, oh, gosh, we can't lose James Franklin, too. Mm. So let's give him $75 million. About that, yeah. He has $64 million guaranteed. Like, he's... He let, he USC, set, he he's, let USC use him to cover uh, up what they were doing, and then he was able to take... It's, it was really him. one of the great ruses of all time. It was a symbiotic mutual yeah. relationship that they could hide the cloak of Lincoln hey, Riley. You and me, let's grift together. <laughs> hey, Lincoln Riley, Riley, I'm not going to LSU. Well, factually, that is true. That he is. did. He was not going to LSU. He was always going to USC. While James Franklin utilized USC and maybe the overtures there. Gosh, it really just worked great for everybody. Yeah. You know he'll try and and Those do two this. are basically... On parallel paths. They right? really are. And so. he'll try and do the same thing with Texas A&M. I'm mm-hmm. sure of it. And Penn State will be like, oh, man. No, you know I don't what? know if they you I don't do know that. if Texas A&M is going to. Uh, they're not going to no, fall for it? Not, I don't think they're going to make it. He's such a great recruiter. He's an no. amazing well, recruiter. Well, they just had good recruiting. genius. <laughs> they just had good recruiting. They had like, oh, okay, yeah. Maybe they give maybe it to Bobby. Petr- maybe they give it to Bobby Petrino. Put him in charge of that. That's got to be Mike Norvell or Dan Lanning, right? I mean. If I'm yeah. Dan, if I'm Dan Landing, I don't take it if I'm landing. Which, I, I don't think I, do I think Dan Landing's smart enough yeah. to realize I got a really good thing going yeah. here. I'm going to be in the Big Ten. Yeah. I've got all the money in the world behind Oregon. I'm not going to have near the pressure or crazies that I have to yeah, deal 100%. with at A and M and like Nike, I, Nike money and the new Big Ten contract. And Why I'm, would you leave Oregon? Yeah, and I don't. And you're playing to, really well right now. Yes, <laughs> we've your got program, program is good. Yeah. We've got a program built. Yeah, we're going to the Big Ten. Like yeah. we're going to get in for the top three or four team in our yeah. conference. Why do I want to go there and slug it out with these guys and and I've also got to handle Texas in my state, who now is in the SEC. I think Norvell is a, a name to watch there. I think they're going to get turned down by all those guys, which is how they'll wind up with James Franklin. And Urban, <laughs> Meyer. <laughs> Urban Meyer. That, uh, I can't see that. How much money would it take? Anyway. Uh, all right. Let's, I mean, so, Penn State. Everybody has a number. Want. I don't I don't know that he does at this point. Yeah, yeah fair enough. He, unless he's changed his mind on that, but which Jacksonville did. I don't think anything changed for me as what I saw on Saturday. Okay. I mean, I. That Ohio State Michigan game is going to be a very similar game to the Penn State Ohio State game and the Michigan Penn State game. So uh, I think that's what anyone should have expected if you watched both these teams all year. Michigan certainly 
was less dominant now that they aren't mm-hmm. cheating and now that they're playing a team that had a good defense and uh, JJ McCarthy their their, pa- their pass pro isn't as good as I thought it's not yeah. good at uh, not really good at all that, like, I don't know the right be able tackle to run the was in hell I mean, I mean twenty straight plays in a row right 30, the 32 straight runs it now they did throw they got the, the pi the, that, I don't the think they're gonna do that against that I mean, was a very weak pi but that was the only pass they threw in the second half I mean he kind of looked and gave him like I could tell how many people weren't watching the game by how many times they repeated that stat like they did throw a pass. They got a pass yeah. interference yeah. call. They but it's a penalty there for the point. And that was a third. But it's still a play. That was a, that was a third. On, that was a third yeah. down. Yeah. It, it that. Okay, because when they said that, I was trying to remember. I thought that I'm like maybe it did happen in the first half, and I was just really drunk and couldn't remember. I don't know. Yeah, they just <laughs> they just ruled it out because it's a penalty. The, yeah. pl- the play's not official, so. Uh, but but the, the yards are. Yeah, but uh, that's penalty. Well, they kept saying people would say they called 32 in a row. They didn't call 32 in a row. They ran. Yes, they were so officially that offense against anyway. You know, State I don't know why defense. I'm worried about the semantics. It, but it, done it was a bogus PI. I don't. I don't and that's what I'm saying. I, I, just, I wish. Like, hopefully, Lathan will be back. And if he's not, well, Malik, get some, get yourself a neck roll, and Michigan, be ready to go. Well, yeah. Michigan, the last couple weeks has not run sunny, the ball like, particularly well either. Sorry, I mean Michigan has not really run the ball particularly well. Do you think they're better than last year? No, I don't think so. I don't. I, I think you're missing some stars. From that defense, I mean, I, I obviously their defensive tackles are really good. Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, and um, the Chris Jenkins are all really good players. I, Will Johnson, the corner, has a potential to be you know first round pick, and but I, I just don't think it's the same. I, I just don't see it out of their linebackers. I don't see it out of so rank the teams 21, 22, 23 with Michigan. Twenty one was first. Okay, that's uh, I, I thought that as well. Uh, even without. The quarterback. I mean, even without this version so of JJ McCarthy, JJ McCarthy, because the defense had it was elite so good players, yes, you know, mm-hmm. elite, elite players. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, this year, it's so hard to really gauge them because if you look at the way they've played in the last couple games since the Stallions thing broke, I mean, Michigan State, whatever. I, Michigan did not play particularly well against Purdue. I know the final score was forty-one to. 13 or whatever, but that mm-hmm. was, we watched that game. That is, that, that team did not passing, dominate that. They didn't play that good against already Rutgers. Like this. And that was before Stallions. Yeah, I mean, it, it was 14 they, to 7. It, it was halfway through the third. Most of their first halves looked a lot like that. Yeah. I mean, coincidentally, right? Yeah, I mean, whatever. I'm just saying. I know. And then weirdly, yeah. they'd figure some they things still out give, they in the have, locker room. Yeah. Connor have, would get involved. Like, you know what? We got him now. We got him. They haven't, this. they haven't given up a point in the third quarter this season. That's pretty crazy. They had not allowed a an opponent to have a play inside in a goal to go situation until Saturday, which is crazy. Like those are those are crazy. So it numbers. took Mike Yersis to crack the code. Yeah, and then he gets fired. But <laughs> I mean let's <laughs> it up. You saw where they can be beat on Saturday. If you're able to run the ball a little bit, mm-hmm. I mean Penn State If you have any type of a competent passing offense yeah, as yeah. well, there's opportunities there. I agree. And it's the same situation I think with JJ that it was a year ago. Like the the reason he had success was they Schemed up some stuff that was wide open. He wasn't making tight window throws. Well, no. He wasn't. I, yeah. They weren't contested. It was. It just, wasn't under yeah. pressure. I will say this to the day I die, and it's def- in defense of one of Berm's all time favorites. As you look at what happened, the double move against Cam Martinez last year, which I feel like was one of the ones that was, a, that was a backbreaker. Well, and, it was the first one. I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was the was, one. It was like, the second one that was put them in the lead. So, but I said, you, you know, I looked. I was, dude, you, you didn't play it correctly. You look up. You you drive the route. Obviously, you, you know, you look up. You know, you play the ball and they double move you and you're done. You have no safety behind you. It's picked a bad play to have a bad play. Mm-hmm. Like that happens. There's mm-hmm. sometimes like, hey, it was just a the, if they're in, it's a normal play and you have a safety or maybe they don't see the guy, whatever. You're in a max pressure, no safety, and they're in max protection and running a double move. I'm like, sometimes they just get you. And I, the more I look at yeah, that, I'm like, huh, isn't that interesting? What a coincidence! Then it's like Dion's like the guy has to make the play. I'm like, mm-hmm. yes, but. If I'm the quarterback, but, give me the, I I could have done yeah. that. Oh, you're telling me everybody's yeah. in, they're manned up outside, he's gonna run a double move on this guy. Seven man protection, yeah, we're I'm picking gonna be it up. Okay. Yeah, you got your I know where I'm going. Your wide receiver one versus uh fourth safety. Yeah, like, yeah I mean I, it's I hate when people say, Oh, you can tell them they still gotta stop. I'm like, shut up. They do, <laughs> but yeah, they do. I can put you in a bad situation. If I know a pressure's coming from where I can do a lot of stuff as, as an offense coordinator to if kill you in that play call right there. If you're counting cards in Vegas they don't shut you down because you win every single hand. Yeah. You're just winning more than you should. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Michigan was doing. Yeah. <sighs> it's, it just bothers me because, like, the narrative around that, like, especially even around him, like, with what happened. It's like, dude, I understand. 
could have played it better, and maybe you still stop it. Maybe they catch it and you tackle them, whatever. But I'm like, you literally put yourself in the best situation mm-hmm. to be able to get it done. Like, like what does it matter? The, the, well, the first right. pass play in that game, the first long touchdown, the one that, that Cam, Cam Brown misses the tackle. Yeah. Again, if you know exactly where the pressure is coming from and you know exactly what the, the coverage is, it's pretty easy as a – and then you just need to make one guy miss and quarterback to, to do that. And all you need is that one guy to not make a play. Yep. And then you, especially when you put that in contrast with that performance a year ago and then Saturday against Penn State, where it didn't look like he was capable of literally doing anything as a passer. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you're, you're going to tell me that they don't have any edge and if they're not able to run the ball against Ohio State, which I don't think they will, that J.J. McCarthy is going to go beat them? I, I don't I don't believe After that. After watching no. that game against Penn State, there's still, no chance. He can that. prove me wrong. I, I'm still I, on the fence about – I'm still skeptical that Ohio State's run defense is good enough to slow them all the way down the way they need to. Not um, having Lathan hurts because Lathan is right. physical, yeah. he is smart, and he is a sure tackler. And if yeah. Tommy's at all not 100%, uh, you know, we, we don't know what the situation with Michael Hall is. Ohio State's defensive line has seemed at times to be okay with letting guys pick up six yards rushing the ball because eventually you're going to only pick up three that one time, and then it's second and seven, third and seven. At Michigan with Blake Corum. With they'll Dunn, just keep running it. Yeah, they'll yeah. just keep doing it. They showed that on Saturday. They, they, they ran the ball on third and nine. And they got it <laughs> I mean, many times. Yeah. And that's that's where it's J.J., J. because we, we watched what Gavin Wimsat was able to do with Rutgers and just the threat of that run quarterback like changes things a little bit for the defense. So, I mean, I don't know that anything really changed. Michigan, I, I don't think, was as good as people wanted to make them out to be all year. Uh, I don't think that they're bad. And I, I don't think that Saturday was a revelation of, oh, look, they can't do this. Mm-hmm. I, they went out and said, we don't need to throw the ball in the second half, and we're going to win. I think if we know. Because they knew so that we, Penn State couldn't score. <clears throat> well, that's, 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 that's part of it. <laughs> but with how well the secondary is playing on the perimeter, and you don't know what they're going to be in. Mm-hmm. I would like to believe that we should be able to mm-hmm. stop their perimeter Super. players and then lean in on the run mm-hmm. as much as it takes, whatever it takes. And you tell the, you tell Denzel and Jordan and Davidson, like, like, hey, dude, you, it's your you day. guys. Yeah. It's your day. Go, you're better than these guys. Mm-hmm. The guys you see in practice are infinitely better than them. you got to stop them. And they don't know what you're doing now, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So we can do some things. We can change this up in D-line. Listen, this isn't a big sack game. Just go stop the run. Mm-hmm. Get them to third and Old six. Contain, yeah. yep. Get them to third and six. They don't need to be dancing around trying to create pressure all the time. Get them to third and six. We'll stop them more than we want. Get there. off the field. Get off the field. So, Jay-Z, did it change for you at all? Uh, I, I thought Michigan would beat them more handily. I mean, it's 20, what, 25-14. So I mean, it's 24-15. Or 24-15, sorry. But, so, I mean, it's not a bad win by any means. But mm-hmm. I, I didn't think... Penn State's offense was going to be able to – I mean, they didn't do anything. I, I was surprised at how the offense for Michigan just became one-dimensional, and that's all they had to do, and I understand that. And it's, you know, late in the season as well, so they don't want to put a bunch of stuff on film, and they're just going to run it down your throats and, and get out of there with a win. I think they are not as good as what people have been talking about them all year long. Um, I think our game is going to be our game. It's a rivalry game. I don't care what we really think about them or what they really are. They're going to play tough, we're going to play tough, and we're going to have to figure that one out. I thought that, you know – the, even the twenty four fifteen final is misleading. It really was a yeah. seventeen to nine. Yeah, it was like the Ohio State yeah. game. Same thing. Yeah. It was very Same. similar. It, it was a the decision by Franklin to to go for two at the end of the first half was boneheaded. The decision to go for two after the final touchdown instead of extending the game was the boneheaded. analytics tell you to do but that, but that's the worst. The worst the play worst was going for it on fourth and six from his yes. own thirty. Yes, yes. with four minutes to go when Michigan hadn't driven the ball. Not done anything to you, and you could have punted with three timeouts and got the uh, ball back. That he, was the that, that was the worst decision. Almost he made. got there because he punted it with seven and a half to go, and they literally <laughs> made the reference. Made it. <laughs> this was the one against Ohio State that they chose, and I'll give Joel Clyde credit. He's punting here. This is the wise thing. It's what he didn't do against Ohio State because then you saw like, oh, they got it. Yeah. Boom, touchdown. And that game bo- over. That broke the back of the, mm-hmm. the defense going out there deflated. Yeah. Quorum scores the next play, and that that's the game. Like, what would lead you to believe that you could pick up a fourth and six? Like, yeah. Yeah. Unless you absolutely have to. You could have stopped him. You had two yeah. times. The the by enough. the way, I think he on fourth down earlier, that was the time he chose the punt. They called a timeout yes. and elected to punt anyway. Yeah. What are we doing? Fourth and one, I maybe I understand it in that, in that situation. They've been running the ball well, but it, knowing that they were putting the ball in Allard's hands there yeah. at fourth and six was just absolute. Oh, don't worry, they had a great, they great call. They had a great call lined up. I throw mean, back to oh, throw it back to Allard. Yeah, so. <laughs> they had a really. It's line. The only way you can get fourth and one. I mean, they did a good <laughs> job, didn't you? See, Jay Z, they, they 
Did you watch that fourth down? I mean, it, it, like no, all the, the, the oh, the, the guy broke out. out. Yeah. He was trying to like look like he was breaking in. I don't know if it's supposed to be an option. I'm like, it was almost as bad as the Mac Jones throw. It really sure was. Now, so it, it was close to that. Like yeah. it was ten yards. I don't from, know what happened. It was ten yards from any receiver. Been, yeah. He's been pretty rough. Uh, so, it, since uh, our game when he was, I have a everybody was wishing we had him. I want to properly cite. So this, I was listening to uh, Bucknuts Morning Five on my way down to Columbus this morning. So I listened to everyone in the ecosystem. Mm, that's uh, good. And they had a question: Is Marvin Harrison Jr. the best player ever at Ohio State, other than maybe Orlando Pace? Uh, well, okay, other than Orlando Pace, I don't know if I can hmm. get there quite to that point what, what do you have to what what do you have to see or where where is the separation where well let's I mean, just put just a, let's, where is he at on the mount rushmore of ohio state I mean, all-time at, football players i don't think he's on mount rushmore i don't know i mean man. i look at like a guy like antoine winfield with what he was able to do i some of those mid-90s teams you know, well, a guy like chris yeah, chris carter mid 80s um, for him but yeah but he mid 80s you look like well, marvin's gonna pass carter on every well, it's also a different time. Yeah, but I, I mean, how are you, but it's also only I, two years. I think and listen, Chris was on crack, so it? give him a little bit of. Crumbs. I think that's. I think that's a little <laughs> okay. bit too much recency bias to ignore <laughs> Orlando, Eddie George, like, Archie Griffin, like, but even outside Troy, of Troy, like what are we talking? Like you look about? at a guy like Andy Katzenmoyer and how Jay-Z, like dominant yeah. he was. Get out of here! Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I, like so, I look at some of these guys, elite players like Joey Galloway. I mean, listen, Marvin has unbelievable stats. You get time, how the game is officiated. First of all, you can't freaking hit any of these guys anymore. Mm-hmm. Everything is targeting Everything in the world. Different. You know, so there, there's just a lot of stuff. You, it, at one of the – pick your Bosa. Chase, yeah, like, no, look Chris at Joe, Gamble. Look I mean, at Joey Bosa. Who, Chris, I mean, Chris, Chris Gamble was a I great athlete. It's, it's a conversation where if you look at his productivity and what we know about him as a person, the way that he the, – Yeah. He's the, a, the value that he has to the team, like, is – has he – Elevated himself into a conversation of being an all-time great at Ohio. Like, I mean, people people can't even, remember can't even answer so it for that until it, twelve days. And also, and also, like, part of it is what yeah, I mean, what, what, what are we using as the qualifications? Is it yes. simply what you did at Ohio State? Is Ohio is State it plus awards the NFL? Won or is, awards? Yeah, I mean, like, it's all kinds Big of stuff. Daddy went number one overall. Yeah. Like, I mean, a defensive tackle. Like, that's I mean, that's real. So, like, I don't know. Like, I think he could be. He's in a very. It's a very small group. But a lot of it is going to be defined. What happens here in the next, the next month. <laughs> the next month. Yep. How he plays. And we're going to talk about that a lot more next Monday when we come back into the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. It will be the week of the game. Until then, a little appetizer of Ohio State and Minnesota. Mm. Senior day. Mm. Celebration. Go for <laughs> So yummy. We bring in Bill Carl Spackler wow. in to help Love take it. care of the Take mm. care of them. <laughs> Delicious gopher. Didn't think that that was how he's going to wrap it up because Roosters does not serve gopher. They do the not fact that we them. only got make... one Carl Spackler reference. We don't play Minnesota very often anymore. I want to make that. We clear. haven't even talked about they EJ are... Flex drinks of choice. Yeah, well, uh, his. We, we, we haven't. No one's rowed the freaking boat. I mean, this is because all the geese honking no to encourage because he's trying not to lose his job after getting absolutely embarrassed. Oh, by he got a big deal. He's got paid. Oh, uh, appetizer oh, three. Come Thursday. on, appetizer Thursday. Mac Spots. and cheese. Or no, not mac and cheese bites. I was looking at the mac and cheese bites. Jay Z's favorite. And you can pay full yeah, price for mac and cheese favorites. bites tomorrow, but you can get these for three dollars and register right. for Sorry. the Roosters Gold Trip giveaway. And we will be back here next Monday to talk about the game. Hope you have a great week. That's Justin's week. Bobby Carpenter, Jeremy Birmingham, Nicole Cox. Thanks for having us. I'm Austin Ward. See you later.